He calls himself the chief twit of the world. But is there a method to the Elon Musk madness at Twitter? Why does the world's richest man want to charge $8 for a blue tick on Twitter? That and a lot more to discuss. I'm Barkadat. You're with the Mojo Story. Elon Musk has announced that he needs to pay the bills. You heard that right. That's what the world's richest man is saying after his acquisition of Twitter. Musk now wants to charge for the blue tick or the verified badge on Twitter, which is actually mostly reserved or meant to be for public figures. He's saying an $8 pricing seems appropriate to him and it can be adjusted proportionate to a country and therefore have kind of different slabs country-wise. This has created outrage, mirth, means, debate. But the larger question still remains. What will Twitter look like under Elon Musk? The old team is gone. The new team is in. Donald Trump could be back. Is the idea to basically pay and get a blue tick an equalizing, democratizing move, as many have suggested, breaking down false hierarchies? Or could it, in fact, lead to greater disinformation and fake news? Remember, the idea of a blue tick is that this was a verifiable real-life person, not a bot, who was responsible for what she or he was saying on Twitter. Let's unpack the Elon Musk Twitter with our panel of experts today. Let's bring them up on the screen. Pranesh Prakash uh, is with us, one of our foremost technology experts with the Center for Internet and Society. Great to see you as ever. Also joining us from Ku today. Uh, how many people will be leaving Twitter to join Ku? Can they both coexist? Rajneesh Jaswal, who's the head of policy at Ku. Good to see you, Rajneesh. Um, also joining us today is Viraj Shet. He's the CEO of Monk Entertainment. Good to see you, Viraj. And joining us is uh, author commentator Ravi Mantha uh, with a series of provocative uh, tweets on all subjects. Good to see you, Ravi. And finally, our very own Madhavan Narayan, senior journalist, is back with us. Good to see all of you. All right. Uh, let me actually start with you, Pranish. You know, in itself, to say that there is no sort of invisible arbiter of who is verified and who is not doesn't sign, sound like a bad move. But on the flip side, to pay as you go actually defeats the purpose of a verified account. If I understand the need for verification, it's mostly like there could be, as there have been, by the way, seven different accounts claiming to be Barkhadat. But only one is the real me. And that makes me accountable, actually, or should for what I say on my Twitter timeline. That was the whole purpose of this verification badge. Maybe it's become something else along the way, politicized, a status symbol. I don't know. What do you make of Musk's move, Pranesh? Uh, so I think verification, uh, meaning that this account is who they claim to be, is ought to be kept separate from any kind of idea of monetization. Now, uh, in a tweet thread that uh, Elon Musk uh, put out uh, sometime yesterday or today, he noted that uh, uh, there could still be subheadings as there are, for instance, for public officials, uh, noting that they are a public official, noting, and that could, for instance, be expanded to include journalists and so on. So perhaps, there could actually be a distinction between the blue check, which could be kept for uh, monetization purposes, and uh, the verification function, which could be indicated some other way. So, uh, but if these two are to be collapsed into a single thing, that, in my opinion, would be a bad idea. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Uh, but if but, they kept separate, if they kept separate, that it needs to it leads to even greater sort of stratification, and 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 then starts the political debate over who's deciding who is public enough to be verified outside of that price pay chart. Twitter already does that, so uh, I can't see why there would be any more of a debate uh, or, or disagreement over that than there already is, because Twitter already does actually choose who to verify, who not to verify. Um, as it so happens, even their verification, I don't know how strong it is because uh, I have a verified account on Twitter, but no one ever verified my uh, ID or, or anything. I just woke up one fine morning a few years ago with uh, a blue check 
next to my Twitter uh, account handle. I had never asked for this and, and so on. So I'm not even sure how, uh, how uh, you know, their existing process, how exactly they work, whether it's the same with every other account or, or so on and, and so forth. So, yeah. But, but uh, combining but I, those two functions into a single one would be a bad idea. So you're suggesting that if there is actually a separate uh, sort of space uh, for established, verifiable public figures and the others pay, I'm not understanding how this would work. Because, you know, let's say when we are researching, you know, Madhavan, we live in the age of fake news, right? Um, and let's say somebody for sends a WhatsApp forward. Madhavan Narayan just said he's going to run to be Tamil Nadu chief minister. Right. I will tell my researchers, can you first please verify, is this the real Madhavan Narayan? Is this some other Madhavan Narayan? Oh, is it the Madhavan who comes on our shows? There could be more than one man with the name Madhavan Narayan. Maybe there's a DMK leader called Madhavan Narayan, right? One of the ways to research this used to be the blue tick. Now, if that blue tick is going to be in the name of democratization, available to anyone willing to pay eight bucks, and eight bucks isn't a lot of money, uh, it will be further priced down in the Indian context. Won't it lead to absolute chaos of information? No. Uh, Barkha, if you're asking me, I think what uh, Elon Musk has done is a pretty smart move. Let me explain. He's actually created uh, essentially a new class of verified users with uh, because the public figure tag is going to be what the verified tag used to be. So... Ordinary people, including especially I've been having conversations on Twitter with, let's say, company brands. Many of yeah. them want uh, uh, verified uh, the status for their corporate brands or as corporate executives, not necessarily as public figures, but maybe as quasi public figures or at least authentic figures. So as I see it, the uh, verification would become something like what the passport is for us, whereas the public figure tag will become what uh, could be called a diplomatic passport, which uh, gives us access to some kind of a, uh, you know, special status in airports and all. So Mr. Elon Musk is having the eating the cake and having it too, in a manner of speaking. And uh, I'm also here to tell you that I wrote an article yesterday uh, uh, saying when I would pay and how I would not pay. So I said if it's for the right price with a lot of software features, I would pay because as a journalist or as a some sort of a person uh, creating content, I need value. And if I get software value and a monetization option, I'll be willing to pay for it as a cloud sort of a thing. And I must say that Elon Musk seems to have been listening to many of us or people like us and has come out with a lot of features that reads like my wish list, including long video options uh, yeah. that would benefit you particularly, given your so followers on Twitter. So, 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 it's in, so it's interesting that you say that because with a verified badge, we do actually both at Mojo Story and individually already have the capacity uh, to post longer videos than other, other users uh, because we've registered ourselves with Twitter as a professional verified broadcasting uh, entity. But I think, yes, you're, you raise this interesting point that if paying gives you additional features, then people would not hesitate to pay. I am more interested in what that does at the consumption end. I, I, you know, okay, from the user end, you're saying I'll pay my eight bucks, I can get uh, ABC extra perks, including being able to post uh, longer videos, this will enhance me professionally. So that's a service you're paying for. But if everybody is verified for uh, uh, a fee, how do we know what's true and what's not true on Twitter? Let me bring in Rajneesh. Raj, uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, you want to answer that, Madhavan, briefly? I just want to go yeah, to Rajneesh. One small yeah. point I want to clarify that the verified handle, especially the public figure tag, will give the source assumption or the source credibility to the consumers, which basically means if it comes from Barkha, that's verified handle, they, it, is for, it will be for them what for us is a reliable source like a press information bureau or a press release from the World Bank. So... It's a pretty smart move, you know. It's not a bad move at all. It's it, it except that he, he he will make money both ends. Very clever tactic, I must say. He's okay, going to be charging people for something like nothing more than an Aadhaar card level uh, at a digital level. You know, four hundred rupees a month for something every month for just to tell you who you are is a lot of money for Elon Musk. While he continues to build, he talks about democratization, but he's actually creating a nice public figure hierarchy. 
Okay, that's the point. And I want to, I was going to go to Rajneesh, but I saw Ravi's hand go up. So let me actually bring in um, Ravi at this point. Uh, yeah, there's Ravi. Uh, Ravi, you know, there's a left-right battle uh, on Twitter about who gets verified, who doesn't get verified. Uh, both sides claim an arbitrariness. It's a deeply politicized conversation. With a flat fee, does that debate end? Can we unmute Ravi? Yeah, go ahead. The, 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 there are two very distinct components. The first thing is the is the current verification process, which I think is deeply unfair. Uh, there is about four hundred thousand people who are verified on Twitter, and probably another you know two or three million who should be verified but who are not. Okay, and that, that's probably just down to Twitter's own resources rather than any kind of uh, you know political vendetta against a certain type of uh, uh, viewpoints. The second point, which I think is very important, is. Uh, and even if all 400,000 people paid $8 a month, right, you're looking at an income stream of uh, less than half a billion a year, right? I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. About, uh, you're looking at around uh, 50, 60 million I, a year. I, I, I think it's right? 30 hours. I think the new statesman calculated that it's 30 hours worth of advertising, and therefore, actually, yeah. it's a kind of meaningless source. Uh, of advertising compared to the five billion Absolutely. it already generates from ads. But go ahead, Ravi. Uh, Correct. So yeah. uh, Twitter, Twitter now has an interest burden of about a billion a year that they have to pay because of this overpaid ex acquisition. I mean, Elon, Elon vastly overpaid. Forty-four billion is an extremely high price to pay for for Twitter, and the interest burden itself is about a billion. So even if all four hundred thousand current blue ticks. Uh, you know, signed on, and and that amount would would not even make a dent in, uh, in in the interest burden, let alone make a move the needle in terms of Twitter's revenue. So I don't buy the the revenue argument at all when it comes to this uh, eight dollars a month. Um, the real issue now is, does this eight dollars make this more of a, a you know a democratized uh, you know content, right? And now you look it, at the and does look it, at the and does alternatives. It. Yeah. I mean, but look at the alternatives. Like you, you have Facebook, you have TikTok, you have, uh, uh, you, know, you have Instagram Live, you have YouTube, which has now launched the Shorts. Those providers are actually going into a, a business model where they're sharing revenue with the content providers. Yes. Whereas Twitter is going in a whole different direction. I'm not sure this is going to succeed, to be honest with you, because there is enough alternatives. That's a very interesting point. Uh, well, YouTube certainly pays a percentage and others are now looking at it. Facebook is meant to, but Facebook's algorithm... I think has gone to hell and back. Uh, for anyone who's a content creator on Facebook, I think we'd all agree. Uh, Rajneesh, who was set up uh, to be a kind of um, a kind of alternative uh, at a time when Twitter was seen as a highly politicized battlefield. Uh, how's that gone for you thus far? And today, Ku's pitch, of course, has come to us. We'll verify you without money. Um, it, so go ahead. Like, you know, how important psychologically is it to a user to be verified? I guess that's what it comes down to. Yeah, so uh, I think we've tried to make life simpler, simpler for ourselves and our users. Um, th there are no, there is no mumbo jumbo behind the green tick or the yellow tick that we give, and I'll talk about that in a minute. It's fairly straightforward. Um, I, I think, I mean, Ku started with 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 the with the objective of giving every every Indian a right a voice on the internet in their own own languages, mm -hmm. and the ability to connect with other eminent folks. So we've, we've, we've divided this into two parts. One is identification. Verify your identity. And that is a legal right in India, by the way. Under the intermediary guidelines of last year, the government asked all social media entities to provide a means of self-verification, mm -hmm. where you could use different means and self-verify that Rajneesh is Rajneesh and XYZ is an XYZ. So that's identification. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part of this is, is eminence, or, or in Twitter terms, verification. We call it eminence. If you are a person in the Indian context who's done awesome stuff like all of you, uh, you will get a yellow tick. And that yellow tick means that more and more Indians will find you, will reach out to you, would want to listen to you. And that's, that's, and, and that's, the, that's a denomination of the good work you've done in the Indian society. Both the identification and eminence are free of charge. We don't yeah. charge for it. And the whole idea behind that is, is users must find people they can follow, engage with, so and did you support the prior system of verification by Twitter? Because I would constantly see, in fact, when Ku was set up, Ku was set up, uh, Ku's elevator pitch was, we're not politically biased like Twitter, we're in equal space, right? Uh, now, now uh, you know, when you have a kind of uh, allegedly right of center person owning Twitter, does that discourse change? 
No, not really. I mean, I think I, I would invite you know anyone watching the show and all of you to go to our website and look at our eminence criteria. We've actually spent a lot of time making it very, very transparent and who would be given eminence. So identity verification is for everyone. Eminence is for the folks who satisfy the criteria, whether they are sports persons, whether they are journalists. Uh, if you've done written XYZ number of articles, we will give you the eminence stick and we'll make sure that more and more people see you. So the, so eminence for us or the verification equivalent uh, is more about giving you prominence and showcasing your, your stuff to other folks who would like to see you. It's, it's nothing more and nothing less. It's as I said earlier, we've tried to make life simpler for ourselves and everyone else. So there I, is a I, 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 yeah. Before I come to Viraj, I think one of the things we have to accept is that all conversations around big tech, social networking platforms are political conversations in all countries. In the United States of America, where I am right now, uh, you've had big celebrities saying we're walking out of Twitter. You've had big brands saying halt the advertising for now on Twitter. So there's going to be a, a kind of lot of churn. In fact, uh, we saw this very public uh, fight between uh, novelist Stephen King and Elon Musk. Elon Musk's earlier price point was $20, $20 for that verification badge. And this argument kind of led him to scale back and place it at eight. Viraj, what do you make of this? I mean, at one level, it's all hilarious. It's highly entertaining. But actually, this is our lives now. You know, I get up in the morning, I used to read a newspaper, I now scroll through Twitter first thing, because it gives me links to, you know, multiple sources of information. And then I choose what information I want to pick up. But it's really important to me, especially as a professional practitioner, that I have some way of gauging what's false and what's genuine. Viraj. Well, I have a bit of a contrarian view from the rest of the folks. Like, for example, Ku right now is in the stage of acquisition, which is why everything is free on the app, essentially. Sometime in the future, they will also have to make money. They will start charging for certain fees or services eventually because the key goal for any social media platform is to enable their top users and content creators. That's how any social media platform sustains. That's effectively what Elon Musk is trying to do. If you see one of the replies on his threads, which specifies that, okay, this is one of the ways in which he will also try to enable content creators. That's how the platform becomes long sustaining. I run a media company where we work with a lot of influencers. And what I see is YouTube and Instagram as platforms are heavily enabling um, influencers in terms of ad revenue monetization or in terms of essentially enabling a lot of branded content deals. Uh, so while the platform may not directly be enabling that, it's a lot of brands uh, that get visibility on Instagram that want to engage with content creators there. The thing is with Twitter, that's not essentially being able to, uh, these brands are not able to execute this because Twitter has a significantly lesser user base. Uh, so I think one of the key things that Elon Musk would want to implement is also reach out to the masses through this. Secondly, I feel like I have a blue tick on uh, Twitter. I would be happy to pay uh, $8, which is adjusted to about 180 rupees as per purchasing um, power parity in India terms. I'm happy to pay 180 rupees per month. And I'm sure anyone who has a blue tick on Twitter can afford that. Um, and also, it's not just for blue tick. If, if you see his words, it's actually for Twitter blue, which gives you access to certain benefits of using Twitter. But but, but the important point Viraj you're making and it's not not really contrarian is basically Twitter needs to increase its user base. You know, right now in India, for example, TikTok is banned. But TikTok is the behemoth uh, in a way, uh, uh, sort of Ooh. everywhere in the world. And now with YouTube sharing monetization with Instagram luring in uh, advertisers that want to sort of co brand with influencers, that is the real crisis for Musk. Is that what you're saying, uh, Viraj? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I, I work with a lot of folks that are Gen Z, right? And Gen Z is really where the market is. Twitter has a lot of mature people because there's predominantly a lot of politics and news being discussed on the platform. They will become a video platform soon enough. You, if you see, they're already promoting short videos on the platform already. The younger folks hate being on Twitter because a lot of them probably don't want to engage with news and politics. And also there's a lot of trolling and toxicity on the platform as compared but to the I, other but, I, but, you know, if you look at this last slide, 1 billion users for TikTok, 1.4 billion for Instagram actively, 397 million for Twitter. There yeah. lies the story, I guess, Viraj. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Madhavan, you wanted to jump in? Then I'll go to Pradesh. Madhavan? Unmute Madhavan, please. 
Well, Ravi yeah. said a lot of interesting things, but Barka, it's pretty simple for those of us who've grown up in the age of newspapers, magazines, and uh, TV channels. Uh, uh, news, Twitter is more like the old-fashioned black and white newspaper or has been so far, and suddenly faced with a uh, crisis because we're the we're the we're the oldies, we're the, we're the oldies. Oldie. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. that gives us the uh, wisdom of hindsight. The point <laughs> is, twi Twitter is right now like a newspaper launching color supplements in order to improve its revenues and advertisements. So the color supplements, the TikTok equivalents will be the videos that will be coming on Twitter, a bit like your Daily Times or HD City. Yeah. And uh, then uh, just as you have TV channels coming in and some of the features of TV channels, like say a lifestyle show has been brought into some of the color supplements, that is the level of it is. But that doesn't mean newspapers lose their charm. It's just that they are making themselves more viable because they know that there will always be a market for serious conversations. And Twitter remains the world's leading platform for serious conversations. But, 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 the, but the general consensus, Pranesh, in this conversation with degrees of difference, uh, you know, maybe maybe Ku has a completely different elevator pitch. And that, that, that's fine. That's a competitive brand. But generally, nobody actually thinks that Musk is being completely crazed out here, completely arbitrary. There seems to be some thought to this. Uh, if, you know, whether you agree with that thought or not, there seems to be some thought. Now, he said pay the bills. But as the numbers show, and Ravi has pointed this out, and, and New Statesman has an excellent article on this saying it's 30 hours worth of, of, of revenue, 30 hours worth of annual revenue. So so what's, what's the agenda here, you think, to lure in more active users? Um, I think, yes. Um, now, I'm not... Uh... A revenues person i am yeah, i have sure. no analysis of, of of any of that but what i can say is uh twofold one most people seem to agree that uh and completely advertising based uh, revenue model for social media leads to bad incentives leads to engagement being uh, the primary uh, metric to increase, which again leads to all kinds of negative uh, effects in terms of uh, what kinds of speech get promoted most, so on and so forth. Now, I would think that uh, for some people having a paid alternative that actually aims to decrease the amount of advertising would be welcomed. But what I'm very surprised by is that uh, many fellow travelers of mine, okay, who would have welcomed it for some reason are not welcoming it because it's coming from Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not trust. And, and I find that strange. Uh, that the second uh, quick point I'd like to make is that uh, who uh, earns more value from a particular relationship, from a particular network, is not something that's static, is not something that uh, can necessarily be predicted ahead of time. So uh, for instance, I, I gave the example uh, earlier uh, today on Twitter, as it happens, of how uh, radio stations sometimes are paid by record companies, and still are in some cases, to promote their music Whereas record companies in turn also get revenue from uh, these radio stations uh, for the royalties for, for playing that sure. music. So who actually derives greater benefit isn't necessarily uh, easy to analyze and isn't and definitely is dynamic. Sim you can find similar kinds of situations like if you're looking at uh, whether uh, airline companies should be paying airports for the privilege of, of using those airports or airports which are, uh, you know, earning revenue from, from the malls should be in turn paying the airlines because without them they couldn't exist. And so and, it's and not think, very and, easy enough. And I think the point you're making is that that it's a constantly shifting um, uh, uh, sort of context, right? And it will shift with the context. And the other important point, and let's bring in Ravi, is uh, if the same policy, let's say, had come from uh, you know, um, a less contentious, high voltage figure than Elon Musk, perhaps it would have been perceived differently. So actually, we're back to politics. Ravi, go ahead. But, uh, you know, the other thing that we have to understand about Elon is he's one of the smartest people on the planet. And he has this habit of floating these trial balloons. You know, I don't think this is a done deal that we're going to end up with this $8 a month for all blue tick holders. I think he's reveling in the controversy of just floating the idea and seeing what happens. Uh, what he will 
do is now I suspect he will let in a whole bunch of uh, you know pe- folks who would love to pay uh, on onto the platform, and then they will figure out how to you know kind of differentiate between different types of folks. I mean you know let's let's be honest. Even in the four hundred thousand uh, blue ticks that are there today, you have like the you know the super celebrities like an Amitabh Bachchan or uh, you know or a Katy Perry or Elon himself. And then there is the rest of us plebs, you know. I mean, the the other ninety eight percent of us, yeah. who you know, who are you know, who are happy to be you know to be the same blue tickly, but we're really not. You know, we know that we are, you know, we're very honest with ourselves uh, that we're not in the same league. So, but those people in particular are the are the product. Let's you know, let's also be realistic that the advertisers are there because there is an Amitabh Bachchan on it, and there is a, even a Barka on it, not because there is a Ravi Mantha on this platform. And and so there should be some kind of a differentiator, and and that's a, there's a self selection process. Maybe there'll be different types of ticks, color ticks that will happen. Uh, you know, th- there's oh definitely God. going to be more differentiation. The rain, the rainbow stratification of Twitter, but it's a very interesting <laughs> point, and I agree with you. I think I, I I think it's easy to dismiss Mr. Musk as a kind of parody figure. Uh, but he didn't get to be the world's richest man for nothing. That's the other thing to remember. Uh, but also, uh, I want to bring in Rajneesh. You know, there's a lot of opacity in Twitter. I'll give you my own example. And this is a complaint so many people have raised about frozen follower counts. I don't even like the word follower, but that's what Twitter calls it. So frozen follower counts. I've literally had the same number of people engaging with me on Twitter for the last, I would say, about five years. For five years, it's a frozen, and I see so many people talking about this. And you have no idea is it the algorithm, is it something else? So, uh, can we expect a less uh, opaque platform? And Rajneesh, I'm sure you want to respond to the fact that right now you're at the come acquire us stage, uh, but at some point, every platform has to figure out how do we re- how do we pay the bills as Elon Musk says. Yeah, no, I, I think before I answer that, I'll respond to Viraj as well, at yes. least for eminence. And for identity, the green tick and the yellow tick, they will remain free for as long as it takes. And this is not a way to monetize. Giving somebody an identity or verifying somebody as a as a as an eminent person is not the way to make money, at least for coup. And it will continue to be so. Um, uh, the other question about frozen frozen counts of um, uh, of followers, I think they will they will grow uh, as. Uh, creators put out good content on Ku. We are already seeing uh, a bunch of people acquire large number of creators. We don't pay anybody anybody any money to create content. Uh, this is all about people putting out stuff which is genuine, and users responding to genuine stuff and following them. And we see that we've seen the numbers grow. Uh, there's a large untapped market out there. Remember, Ku is a regional language platform. We are right now live in 10 languages, including English. Uh, there are 22, 25, 500 Indian languages to explore. And there are always people willing to connect with each other. And, and that for us is the way to monetizing, not, not gra- charging eight bucks or six bucks or 1600 bucks. Yes. That's not the way for us to, to monetize. Viraj? No, I also feel like, firstly, that's amazing. That's uh, I feel like that's super commendable. I think uh, what people are also getting wrong, and I'm just so everyone knows I'm not trying to back Elon Musk here. I just feel like people have him misconstrued in some ways. So anyone who pays eight eight bucks is not going to get verification. Like you, of course, need to be a notable person. There needs to be press around you, and the the verification processes will be quite similar to what they are right now. If you are by the by the Twitter verification team, approve that you are a notable figure, and only and only then you verify your identity, then you will be given the option if you want to have the blue tick badge or not. And you can only probably have it if you pay the 180 ba- uh, rupees yeah. a month. Of Sorry, months. I think Rajneesh wants to come in briefly and I'll let you complete your point after that. Rajneesh? Yes, I mean... I think we've all searched for the Twitter verification criteria. I haven't found it. I'm sure someone else has. So, but you will find the coup eminence criteria very transparently <laughs> listed on our website. Go ahead, Viraj. Complete your point. I think it's a bandwidth problem. Uh, when I tried applying for myself, like I had the same queries. I had to speak so- to someone from the Twitter team effectively, and then they could do it eventually. I think they'd stopped it for about a couple of years. Um, I mean, every social media platform has uh, some issues, but I, I love that Ku is an Indian product, effectively, and is trying to do something like genuinely great in the regional space and empower like the the real Bharat uh, that we all speak of. Uh, so I will make an account in Ku right after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. 
<laughs> verify me quickly. Okay. The, I'm actually curious uh, why Viraj, you wanted that verification. What would have happened if you did? Yeah. I think I yeah. think we all, we all recognize that in a way, many of us are on Twitter for professional reasons, right? right. And therefore, that verification, I think that's the point Madhavan was making. It's an extension of your professional interests. And that is why it matters. It's not some social status symbol, right? Madhavan, I think that's the point, right? Hang on. Unmute Madhavan, please. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. yeah. I mean, let me use my usual analogies. You can't compare a George Clooney movie with a Brad Pitt movie. You know, it's like this. There is there is a certain <laughs> there is a certain gravitas to Twitter, which you cannot deny. And you know, it's so funny. We are discussing democratization, and we are talking also about coups. You know, now there is a coup going on. The thanks to Rajneesh and uh, you know <laughs> the way there is a certain below the line regional languages vernacular revolution going on. But in the internet, there is room for everybody as far as content goes. Yeah. But there is a certain thing called gravitas. And to the extent that, you know, Elon Musk, I, I take, uh, you know, I pretty much said what Ravi Manta said, that Elon Musk is doing a good business job just as somebody can revamp a newspaper. Twitter has been too long sleeping on the job. And I've had troubles helping some of my music celebrity friends getting verified because uh, it, it's like a... A house without a door. You didn't know where to start. And, you know, uh, and there have been lots and lots of complaints of various kinds on Twitter. And Twitter has been slow to move on that. It has been resting on its laurels just because Narendra Modi and Barack Obama wrote to power using Twitter. But so it, it, there was a case for Twitter 2.0. And well, let's face it, uh, there is now a Twitter 3.0 thanks to a lot of new things that uh, Elon Musk has introduced that includes elements of Instagram elements of TikTok. And may I remind that TikTok is banned in India to that extent that in some markets, there have been special uh, uh, you know, opportunities created for Twitter. So uh, it is a complicated battlefield. But what I want to say is that monetization and partial commercialization need not mean the end of serious conversations or verified news or being the prime platform to catch what is now news in a conventional sense. I, 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 I have to say to you that uh, because I'm in the US, uh, I saw this bizarre TikTok trend uh, about people trying Indian food for the first time. And in a repeated way, the three items of Indian food that people try is a samosa, um, butter chicken and a garlic naan with a pudina chutney and a tamarind chutney. And this video, I mean, this trend, not video, this trend has millions of people consuming this content. And it actually terrifies me because, Madhavan, you just made the point about gravitas. I think we delude ourselves in thinking that this matters. It matters to us generationally. I think Twitter's big challenge is going to be how does it get those people who are making those videos on TikTok to Twitter, uh, who look at Twitter as an old person's platform, right? I mean, we're not going to look at these people eating naan and whatever. So... Mm. True. But there's an entire generation that is. I think that's the point I'm making. Viraj is, I think, the youngest person here. Do you want to come in there? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like people on Twitter and LinkedIn, right, they take themselves too seriously. And honestly, no one cares. <laughs> I don't care if you're the president of the United States. I don't care if you're the richest person uh, on the planet. Like, look at how Elon Musk is dealing with things, right? He's effectively being a troll in good humor. Like, he knows <laughs> that none of this matters. Like yeah. it's all a joke. Okay, he just it matters. It. Hang on, it does matter. There's big money. There's t there's information wars. There's politics riding on it. Let's not fool ourselves that it doesn't matter, Viraj. I take the rest of your point. A good show I... about not showing that it matters. He's okay. like making a joke about it. He's taking yeah. it lightly. He's taking. Yeah. He's literally crowdsourcing suggestions to improve a $44 billion company. No, I take like, your point. I take your larger point. That's why I gave yeah. this example of this TikTok trend in the US that, you know, we're, we, for some people, we're a bunch of old fogies taking ourselves too seriously. Uh, but it all matters. I mean, I, the future of governments, the future of politics, uh, the, oh. you know, the future of literally everything is right now being decided. The future of news media uh, is decided by what percentage of revenue big tech is willing to share. So all of this matters. Let's 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 underline that. I've got to close. Uh, Ravi, did you have a quick comment? We lost you in the middle there briefly. Ravi, did, did you have a quick comment? Ravi, if you can hear me. Okay, I don't think we can hear Ravi. Uh, Ravi, can you hear me? Um, yeah. Yes, Barkhak. Um, no, no, look, <laughs> the, 
uh, you know, I fundamentally I believe that you know the the, the verification process has to change because um, mm -hmm. it's we all know, you know, pretty much hundreds of people who should be having a verified account probably personally who who don't, and and that's that's really not. So, so the system's broken for sure. But whether this is the right fix or not, I think time will tell. Okay, Pranesh, do you want to wrap this up for us? Um, you know, I, I, I take Viraj's point. There's a generational collision here. Uh, and Elon, I think, is playing uh, the young person's mascot. Uh, you know, there is a kind of irreverence in him uh, that people either hate or love but can't ignore. Uh, and, and, but, and, you know, this is how he took over the Twitter headquarters famously, for example. A troll in good humor. Uh, where do you draw the line? Uh, Pranesh, last word. Uh, sure. I, um, I don't really have an answer to that, uh, yeah. personally. But what I can say is uh, what I'd love to hear more from Elon Musk about is where uh, the previous CEO, Jack, uh, was pushing, uh, which was towards making Twitter rather than a product into a protocol, rather than a platform into a pro uh, protocol. So there was something called the Blue Sky uh, Initiative that they uh, promoted which would in turn make uh, Twitter more into something like Mastodon. Uh, and possibly, for instance, if something like Ku also adopted that protocol, then interoperable with Ku and, and other such platforms. And I think uh, in the long run, that's where uh, all such platforms should really be, uh, be heading because otherwise too much of the content moderation uh, question too much of the politics, too much of everything rests on only their shoulders, which no single platform really wants uh, that kind of burden, that kind of responsibility, that kind of gaze from the governments and, and so on. So this, whether this portends other kinds of shifts, and if so, how quickly uh, is something that I've yeah, that's a great point. That's a great, that's a great point that when we talk about the politics, it isn't just online in all countries, it's offline, uh, you know, and, and I think that's that's really an important point. The bottom line is the last word on this has not been spoken. Pranesh reminds us that this is a dynamic game. Uh, this shifts literally week to week, month to month, year to year. Uh, and, and, and as far as last words go, you can uh, expect that uh, Elon Musk is certainly garrulous, uh, not a man of few words. Uh, so we're going to hear many last words uh, as they keep shifting on this platform. Thank Thank you, Viraj, Ravi, Pranesh, uh, Rajneesh, and Madhavan. Pleasure as always. And to our audience, see you tomorrow. Thank you. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.